everybody and welcome to Saturday Stories this month. We are so delighted to have Yuyi Morales, who's joining us all the way from Mexico. And it's a little earlier for her, but she's up in her outdoor space, as you can see how beautiful that looks. And she will be sharing her behind the scenes of how she got started in illustration and also as an author. And I'll tell you a little bit more about um, Yuyi in just a moment. So as usual, I like to just explain a little bit about Saturday Stories. This is our monthly series that's mostly virtual. We've only really had one in-person event at the Society of Illustrators since the pandemic, um, but we will be hoping to have a few more in the future. But the beauty of doing this virtually, as you've all um, seen, those of you who are rejoining us again, is that we get to see people who are from all over the world and we get to visit illustrators in their studio spaces. Um, and this just is a better way to reach more people. And also for the participants, they can join from all over. So if you're not actually in the location near the Society of Illustrators in Manhattan, you can be joining from wherever you are. And we've had, um, pan sorry, we've had participants joining us from all over Asia, Europe, um, Canada, all over America. So do pop in the uh, chat where you might be joining us from. And we love to hear um, those locations, it's fun. And then also uh, later, if you would like to put some questions in the Q&A, actually, if you just pop those in the Q&A, I will be um, sharing your questions with you later in the workshop portion of this morning's program. So now, without further ado, I am going to start telling you a little bit about Yuyi, who's also going to tell you more about herself. Um, but Yuyi was born in Culapa. I believe that's how you pronounce the capital of Veracruz in, in Mexico. And um, she, as a child, uh, grew up in a very creative family, actually. Her mother made a lot of um, clothing for them. She sounded like an amazing um, seamstress. She would make bedspreads and curtains and all kinds of clothing for the family. Um, you, you're one of four children, I believe, right? And um, so you were also a very, very good swimmer. And even in high school, was a competitive swimmer. And this led to you really following um, an interest in sports and therefore studying educational sports and thinking that might be the career path she would take. Uh, she got married and had a son and moved to San Francisco. And there, she actually, not speaking as fluent English, had to really sort of get re-acclimatized um, to a new place and um, found joy in the library reading to her son. So she would go to the children's part of the library and there read and find many, many books that were so inspiring. She really was um, taken by all the beautiful illustrations and the stories. And this was something that inspired her. And she started to take some writing classes at Berkeley in San Francisco, and also bought paints and started to teach herself painting. Although she always um, was creative as a child and drew and painted, now she started to really expand on that. And this has led to an amazing career. Let me tell you, she has won so many awards, many awards for the um, Pura Belpre, uh, award, which is a medal, and she's won, I think, five of those, maybe more. And then also the Caldecott Honours, which is the top award you can win. And that was for her book, Dreamers, which she'll maybe mention as well during this program. Um, today, we're going to be concentrating on her latest book, Bright Star, which is the most beautiful book. Um, this is actually a story about a young fawn who's finding his way with the um, her mother or his mother, it's a little fawn, and um, just like how to survive in the, in the wilderness there. And the borderland is the land between Mexico and America. And this is a sensitive um, story about how survival, even for humans, uh, takes place in this area. And Yui really wrote this book to give meaning behind what it's like to be in this um, area and trying to um, maybe come over to America. It's beautifully illustrated, beautiful words. And some of the things that you writes in the back, you'll find there's a whole area in the back of the book that is really special. It really brings meaning to the book. She's written her thoughts about why she wrote the book. And um, as a picture book, it's very strongly driven by the images. And so for today, she's going to share with you all how she created these beautiful images 
and we are able to use a downloaded um, printable. If you happen to have printed that up, um, that was in the registration page, it's a coloring page, or you can try to do that now because uh, Lindsay is going to pop that in the chat if you didn't get a chance to do that. Or um, you can do what I did, which is you can just draw along um, with your own pencils. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Yuyi Morales this morning. Thank you for joining us, Yuyi. Hi, hi everybody. Good to be with you this morning. I'm here in my studio in the uh, state of Veracruz. I'm just like a mile from the water, from the ocean. And this is where I have my studio nowadays. So you might hear the birds and the animals, even my cat who has been like roaming around here. You might even hear people or cars that pass by because this studio has no walls and it's very, very open. And this is where I'm receiving you. I'm happy that you are here today, that we can join together to look at books and see how, how we can make some of the art. When I was a child, um, I like many children, I didn't know how to make art. Um, and I've been learning little by little. I'm still learning. And I'm gonna show you today some of the artwork that I did for this book called Bright Star. With me, I have actually the, the, the hard copy of this um, book, which is in Espanol. So it's called Lucero. And I thought that to begin this journey, this art making journey, we could start uh, reading the story. What do you think? I'm gonna share my screen if I can get help sharing my screen so that we can look at some images together and hold on. You should have access now. Yeah, thank you. I got it there. And we are gonna do play and we'll take this up. So you can see it, can you see it, Claire? Oh yes, I can, it looks beautiful. Awesome. Okay, I hope everybody can see now. So this is a story as Claire mentioned before, it is a baby deer in Espanol, in Spanish, the baby deers, we call them venaditos or venaditas if it, she is a, a girl. I call this, this dear Benadita. And this Benadita is in a journey with her mother to find the things that she needs to survive, water, food, shelter. And then she finds something um, that, um, well, perhaps should not be where she's at. And this is a story set in the borderlands. The borderland is the place where two countries meet. And this is a place where Mexico and the United States meet. That's the border. And at the border, usually there is big deserts, beautiful deserts full of life, even if we don't see them. So when you look into this book, see if you can find some of the animals, some of the plants that are there. Sometimes we have to look really hard to see them. And we are gonna begin this story and it starts with this little blanket and Bright Star by Yuji Morales. And there we go. Child, you are awake. Breathe in, then breathe out, hermosa criatura. You are alive. You are a bright star inside our hearts. When I finish a story here in Mexico, we say these words, we say, y colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado, which means the story is finished. I love stories. And I love telling stories with words, with um, drawings, with colors, with lines. And usually when I start making a story, like the story of Bright Star, I write a lot of notes in my books. I write um, questions and then I try to answer them. Here I'm showing you how I started writing my story for Bright Star. And you see those drawings, they are just like these little drawings trying for me to figure out what story I'm gonna say. So there are the plants with um, the sunshine and there is the, 
hummingbird, and then you might be able to see that the wind comes and something happens, and then Benedita has to run, and her heart is thumping, tom, 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 and uh, she's hiding. That was how I started making the art for Bright Star, trying to figure out the story. And then I start making these little drawings. They are very small, even though you might not see them here small, but they are they are smaller than my thumb. But then I put those drawings inside of my computer because I like to uh, work in my computer. Maybe you like to work in your computer too. And then I start moving and um, and placing. Uh, plants and Benedita, there she is. I put even the text and then I'm gonna have to refine those drawings so that at the end, after many hours of working, I will have this image. I love drawing on my table and I like making things in my computer, but sometimes when I don't know how things look like, then I have to go and take a trip. Maybe it's going to be just like a walk outside my house. Sometimes I will have to go to further places like the desert. I live in Mexico, but I went I, and I took an airplane to go to the Sonoran Desert so I could see how the desert looks like so that I could put those things in my story, in my drawings, Let's look at plants, flowers, some of the things that are and exist at the desert, at the border. And so then I can create this art with all these flowers that I saw when I did my field trip. At the border, there are also walls, just like you saw it in the story. And these walls are put there to stop people, to try to stop people from crossing into me from Mexico into the United States. Those walls not only sometimes stop people from going through, but sometimes they stop animals. And those animals, well, they don't know that, um, that in one place is the United States and the other place is Mexico. They only need to go to where they will find the water and the food. I decided that to make the illustrations of Bright Star. From my field trip, I took some photographs, like this photograph of the concrete wall and the one that you saw before, that's um, some metal from a metal fence that is at the border. And I put those colors and textures inside of my computer. I told you I love to also paint in my computer. And that's the materials, see if you can recognize it, that I use for painting the wall. There is the metal, there is the concrete, and I, I use it in, um, in my computer. I love to use Photoshop. Some of you probably also know how to use Photoshop. I also, you saw that there are some children in the story. And what I did for the children is, yes, I did my drawing first on my table and I had a model. You see, you can see that the picture of a little girl who is a friend of mine and um, she, she posed for me so I could draw her picture. And then I went to the border and I took a picture of this baby who was about to cross from Mexico into the United States. She was waiting for her turn to ask for permission. Sometimes people don't get permission, even if they ask for. This girl was waiting there with her mom for permission and her mom allowed me to take a picture of her arm. And that picture of her arm, I put it inside of my computer again in Photoshop. And from there, I created these colors that you see here. With those colors based in the skin, in her skin, um, I painted the drawing that you saw, uh, the, the, the children that you saw in Bright Star, like this. So 
I like to do a lot of things when I'm illustrating a book, like I did embroidery. Uh, did you remember some of the letters? Like the word Mira, um, I embroider, I, I did embroidery uh, and then I scan it into my computer, put it in my computer, and I was able to place it inside the illustration, like the word Mira that is right there. I also did some weaving. Um, I, I made myself a loom and um, here I am making a little blanket and I used some yarn to create those stars. And then I took a photograph and that image is that photograph that we took and that I put it at the beginning and at the end of the story. And um, yeah, I made some plants and again, I took some colors. I put them inside of my computer, some colors and textures. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I created this um, tunas. that they are called tuna and it's a prickly pear of the cactus called nopal. Uh, where Benedita was hiding. And what I did is first I painted in, this I did in my computer with Photoshop. I just painted the shape of the prickly pear, but still it needed a little bit more work. So I added a little bit of light. I love to work in layers. So I put another layer and I put this clearer, brighter um, touches and then I put some darks to give it shape. I added something that was gonna be like the flower. So again, I painted uh, with darker green and then lighter green to create some shapes, more light so that the shapes are clearer. And then I put some pink to add the color of the flower coming in and I kept putting dark and light until I got my prickly pears. This is a drawing of the cover. It's very similar to the printout that um, you were provided. And I'm gonna show you how I did this with many layers. First, I did the background, I painted the background. Remember this is in my computer, but it can be made also on your table with different materials. And I had already created the little girl. What I'm gonna show you is how I added the deer. First, I painted just the shape of the deer, but here it has no details. So I started adding a layer of dark and light colors so that then I can define her nose, the eyes, where the, um, the ears, change color, uh, then I added the eyes, then I added lights, light hairs, so that you can still see, start seeing where she has some white, um, more hairs, these are kind of like orangey, more hairs, so more layers, then I added the white layers so that it has and then more dark, you see, now she starts looking like the little deer, the Benadita on the cover. And then I added my prickly pears and cactus that I had painted before until I um, began finishing my cover. And there you see, you see, I also added um, some of the weaving and the embroidery that I did. So I was thinking that we could also, I'm gonna stop sharing here so that we can, hi again. <laughs> so we can paint something together. What do you think, Claire? Can we, can we paint something? I thought that we can do something with layers. If, if you at home did the print out, you can use that one. If you didn't, you can always um, have a, a, a piece of paper and I'm gonna uh, take a moment here because I'm gonna set up the place where I'm gonna show you what you can do too. And hold on.
I'm gonna move it here. Can you see it? And here yes. I am. <laughs> okay. I am. Um, yes, I think if you orient it that way, yeah, perfect. Exactly. Here I am. So I did have the print, the print out. I have it right here. If you don't have your print out, you can always use a piece of paper and just copy something. Maybe you want to make a deer. And if you don't know how to make a deer, you can look at pictures. Um, like in this case, here is the deer with her eyes. And here's one ear. Sometimes it's not as easy. Sometimes it takes a lot of erasing. Um, but you can make your own deer. You can have another ear and her body. What I thought is that I'm going to use a print out in case that if you have it, I'm going to show you how I did my my illustration. So I did it in my computer, but here, well, we are going to do it on this table. And if you see, Bright Star has a lot of hairs that I painted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I have some markers here, and I'm going to use uh, five markers. If you can find a marker that is dark, one that is a little bit lighter, and then one that is even more lighter, like this. I have three markers here. I'm gonna make the hairs with this. And then I'm gonna make the clear hairs with these two markers, which is like kind of pink or skin color and a yellow one. And what I wanna tell you is that when I am uh, painting something, most of the time I have no idea how I'm going to do it. So it is okay for you not to know how to do it because painting and creating is always an exploration. You practice, you try something. If it doesn't work, then you try something else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my darkest color and this is a, a dark brown and I'm going to start uh, just putting more hairs in the dark places. So here around her eye, she has dark hairs. She has more dark hairs here. I'm just kind of retouching some, some of the dark hairs and she has a dark nose. So I'm filling on the dark nose like this here. And then she has some dark hairs coming from her nose like this. All this part is dark. And then she has less dark hairs going on top of her head, but she still has some dark hairs. So I'm putting just a spare dark hairs along her head like that. And she has very dark hairs also here on her ear, in this part on the base of her ear. And then just some spare dark hairs along the ear like that. She also has some dark hairs, but very spare like this here. And this is white. She has some dark hairs here, not too many. She has some here. This is her body as well. And later we can add more because I'm sure we are going to need them. And then I'm going to take the next color, which is not as dark, you see, but it's still kind of like a brownish color. And then I'm going to add some more hairs here. And I'm just going to start filling the space with this um, brownish color. She has light here, so I'm not going to put as many hairs because um, we are going to use the yellow and the pink to fill that space. But here, 
she has some hairs as well. And when I was making uh, the illustrations for my book in the computer, this took me many hours. I will stay on my chair for a long, long time, just putting hair here, hair there, until I feel the whole image. You don't have to stay that long. You just look at your illustrations and see if you already like it. If you already like it, you can stop there. If you wanna put some more, I'm gonna put some like around her eyes, but because around her eyes, um, she has a lot of white. I'm just putting like a few dots, not a lot, just to uh, to make it look like like hairs, but not so many. You see. And now I'm gonna use the next color, which is this orange. It's a little lighter. And now I'm gonna feel also the spaces that I still left, where you see that. Um, there is no hair, you can put one or you can put them wherever you want. The great thing about making your own drawing is that you can decide where you want to put the colors, what colors you use, where you put this hair. Um, and if, if it takes you very, very long, you can always have a friend to talk to or you can put on music and just continue working until you like your drawing. I'm gonna paint orange, the, like the eyelids of my Benedita, like this, you see? I painted orange. And I'm gonna use, um, remember I told you I have this yellow and I have this pink. And I'm gonna do the light parts of Benedita. I'm gonna paint them with these two colors. So I'm just putting, I'm giving her some hairs that are light color. Here on the cheek, under her nose, on her chin and around her eyes. She's very light there, also on her neck. And I can add yellow too. So just some, some touches of yellow so that it looks like she has some yellow hairs. Because most everybody, especially animals, they are not made of one single color. They are made of many colors. The hairs of Benarita are made of many colors. So I'm gonna keep adding also more dark hairs and I'm gonna give it um, some darkness on her eye. Uh, you can also like mark the eye like this so that then it's um, a little darker. You can add like some dark spots because eyes also have um, like different shades and lights. And I'm gonna put some more dark hairs here. You can decide where where you can you want to add some darkness so that you make it a little clear some of the edges maybe and i will continue putting um hairs until i am happy with my drawing Oh, I told you that this part is lighter too. So I'm gonna put some here on the on her forehead, some of the pink and yellow markers. I'm, I'm using my yellow and pink markers to give her some light on her forehead right there. 
and then I will put more hairs until it's time to go and have lunch or I need a break. And mostly until I'm happy. When I am happy with my drawing, then I am done. When you are happy with your drawing, you can be done too, or you can continue as much and for as long as you like. I wanted to show you, okay, let's finish this here. And more or less, that's my, my Benedita. Yes. With layers. In the same way that I do it in my computer, but this time I did it here with the markers. I wanted to show you that you can use any colors that you want. For example, I, I used um, the dark, the brown, I used the light brown, here they are. I use the orange, and then for the light hairs, I use um, these two, the, the pink and the yellow. But maybe I want my little deer to be a different color. So maybe I want her to be blue. What you can do is again, choose one dark blue, one middle blue, and then one light. And you can create um, your Benedita in blue. Like, look, I did it here. And again, for the light parts of Benedita, I use the um, pink and the yellow. And then for the dark parts of Benedita, I use my dark blue. Then I use my middle um, blue and then my light blue. And that's how I painted it. It's very um, relaxing doing coloring. I just, not just to watch you doing it, but also obviously to do it yourself. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think to take the time to use all the different shades that you're explaining, uh, it just adds so much more of that peacefulness of, um, taking your time to think about, yeah, the fur texture. She looks so furry, right, everybody? <laughs> yeah, we are creating a furry uh, Benadita right here. And I don't know if this happens to you, Claire, but most of the time I, when, when I'm painting, when I'm creating, I have no idea how to do things. Um, and then I don't know if the result is going to be good or I'm gonna like it but what I know now is that as long as I am doing something that I like I can keep exploring yeah yes yeah and it's up to you to everybody to to just decide what is the part that they like and what they want to continue doing if you don't like one color you can change that color um, if you don't like a uh, drawing that you made, you can always erase that part that you did, you are not so happy with and draw it again until the, um, the drawing and, or the painting that you create, um, you love it. You are the one who has to be very happy and love you, uh, your own creation. It, nobody else has to approve it. Yes. And also everybody, if you didn't have markers, um, you could use colored pencils. I'm actually using some colored pencils just as effective. So you use what you have. If you have crayons or whatever materials, you can still have fun coloring it in and trying to use different shades as you use mentioning. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different art materials to explore. And usually she does a lot of um, other um, uh, creative, techniques like the sewing, the embroidery. That's pretty amazing. I, I would love to have a go at doing embroidery. Yeah. yeah. And what a lovely idea to do it for the um, words in the book. Have you, yeah, how long have you been doing embroidery? Have you been doing it since you were little? Yeah, my mother taught me how to do embroidery. Yeah. Uh, must have been like, like six or seven and she has been trying to teach me through the years. And that doesn't mean that I'm good or that I know how to do it or that I'm an expert. Um, but I think that what mother, my mother mostly told me, taught me, sorry, 
um, was to uh, to adventure. And mm -hmm. if I don't know how to do something, just try, you know, just try, try yeah, and see and see if you can figure it out. You can come up with your own technique, and that's what I've been doing all the mm -hmm. time. It's also part of Mexican heritage. I mean, there is such stunning, beautiful embroidery on on clothing. So it's you know that's yeah. also because you like yeah. to include things that are from your culture, which I think exactly. is all beautiful about your books. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, precisely with most of my books, like with Bright Star or Dreamers that you mentioned before, um, and all my other books before them. Uh, I am always um, bringing elements from my growing up here in Mexico, from my uh, my connections that I have to the way that people make art. Um, there are many, many different ways of making art. And one of them is embroidery. Uh, you see it in many places. I don't have any embroidery exactly here with me, but in my house, I always have, um, uh, pieces of cloth that had been embroidered by mostly women, usually mm -hmm. women, um, and I use them to put my tortillas inside or to cover uh, my yogurt uh, so that, you know, it, it, it stays yeah. clean. Uh, mm -hmm. And I use it in many different ways, so sometimes I have it in my clothing, mm -hmm. um, but I do love to surround myself from embroidery, and then I get inspiration from it. And yes. that inspiration yes. goes into my books. Yes. Yeah. So I always like to encourage, um, you know, young students who are experimenting with their style, their own style, to just look around at things that they enjoy around them, whether it's um, collections of toys or, or certain books or, you know, little objects, things that they collect in nature. You know, all of these things are really inspiring to put in your drawings. Um, yeah, so actually speaking of that, so there is a lot of nature in your books. So as you, as everybody saw, he usually goes to locations, she just gets outside to look around her. And even with this book, she needed to go to the desert. She also needed to go to the borderland. So she, you know, she's really looking in detail, not just looking at, um, you know, at photographs, because obviously we can also research, we can get books from the library or we can look on our computer for research, but to actually get into nature and see it in real life, because there you, you get a different sense of it, right? The light and the texture, and you can hold things if it's little rocks or feathers and things. Definitely. Yeah, I do get a lot of inspiration. I always find things I didn't know before. Yes. Um, just in the same way that when we read books, we do find things that we didn't know before. Um, our world is also an open book. And if we go and search, we will find a lot of surprises. So I did find surprises with uh, when I was making Bright Star. And the other thing that I have done is that if there is something that that becomes very important to me, very symbolic. I do go and take a picture. And sometimes just like what I show you that I did with the, the arm of this little girl, she was at a detention, she was at a, an immigrant shelter with mm -hmm. her mom waiting to, uh, to get uh, an appointment where they might be, they might be given mm -hmm. permission to come in the United States, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and I, with a photograph of her arm, yes, I used that piece of, of the skin, put it in the computer, and I was able to paint the skin of the children. And I've been doing that for my last couple of books. Like, um, for instance, with Dreamers, I took photographs of a lot of things that were important to me in my journey of becoming an immigrant and I put them inside of dreamers. Yeah. Here I took the photograph of the arm of the baby, but I also took the photographs of the materials of some of the walls that were at the border and putting them inside of my computer, I use them to paint yeah. the images that you see there. So going out, um, taking a field trip has become really important. Yes, I love that. Um, so yes, actually speaking of textures, so as you were just coloring in the fur of the little Benedita, you mm -hmm. also then have to think about how the plant would look different, you know, because the plant has a different texture. Yes. So 
Are you going to color that in next? <laughs> well, we could, we could. I have some uh, colors here. And when you are talking about using different materials, yes, um, I do have other materials. I have these that are like crayons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. And even if you don't know how you are gonna paint it yet, you can start experimenting. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna take at least a couple of greens to paint. And sometimes uh, cactus have also a little bit of orange. So I, I don't have to paint the whole thing, but I can add some green on one side, then a lighter green on the other side like that. Yes. And maybe I can add some orange at the top and, oh, there you go. Can you see it? I'm gonna do another one. Oh yes, beautiful, uh, there you go. I'm gonna yeah. use dark on this side and see if I, we can see it closer. Oh, yeah, perfect. So, you know, kids, you can see how he's making that look three-dimensional with the shading. That's really mm -hmm. a lovely technique for you guys to practice um, with I the two colors. Mm -hmm. Orange on top. Same here, I'm gonna put some of the dark green at the bottom. And now the rest, I'm gonna fill it with the lighter green. And I'm gonna put a little bit of green on this. And here I would like to use um, a different color that I don't have, but I'm gonna use this red. I have this red and with this red, I'm gonna put it just on the top, on at the at the top, on the tips. You see? Yes, see. that's where the, the cactus flower is coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So exactly the flower. Let's let's do this one, one more, and I'm just gonna get it closer so that everybody can see. So I'm I'm using the darker green like at the bottom, and a little bit here on the side. And now the rest is a light green. I'm gonna use some dark green again at the bottom of these shapes right there. Now a little bit of the light green in the middle. And now the tips, I'm gonna add some red. This is with my crayons. And um, like if I were gonna make this nopal, it's called, this cactus is called nopal. So I'm gonna add the dark green where um, it's kind of like at the bottom and here where it meets with the other um, cactus so that it can of separate from, mm -hmm. from the other leaf. And now I wanna, add the light color here. Maybe because here um, they join together, it will get a little bit of shade. So I'm gonna use the dark green and again, finish it with the light green. Um, and there is my cactus. This is the other ear of Benedita, which I didn't realize before. I can always add some hairs here ear and to do the uh, the flower i'm gonna isn't use it, the, sorry to say, isn't it lovely how for the participants this morning we can hear nature because you're in an outdoor sort of like little room there so we can hear it's so nice it feels like we're outside <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so i'm just putting like dark red on the bottom and so where, where some of the petals start. And then I have orange and I'm gonna use the orange to continue painting. You see a little bit after the red, orange. And now I'm gonna finish it with, I have this yellow and it's lighter. So I'm gonna put the yellow 
on the very, um, like at the edge of the petals, like on the tips of the petals. So then you have. Yes, that's really beautiful. Different colors and it gives it a little bit of volume and um, mm -hmm. just makes it multidimensional. Yes, absolutely. So don't forget everybody that we just love to see your artwork as well, how you're being inspired. If you're coloring in the um, printable uh, coloring page that usually, uh, you know, she created that for the class, uh, you can be sending your coloring uh, of that in any way that you're doing it, whether you're doing it more realistically, like in this particular coloring, or if you're doing it in something completely imaginary with a blue or a purple uh, little deer, uh, we'd love to see your ideas. And also if you're drawing your own um, deer or other animals, and there were a lot of little critters in the book actually. So there's some inspiring um, animals that were in the behind the scenes of the main characters. So as in nature, there's always some insect or little creature hiding amongst the plants and leaves. Um, also in the sky, we saw the bats. Um, so yeah, be inspired to draw your own uh, scenes as well from this workshop and the workshop um, will be it's being recorded and it will be uploaded on our YouTube channel the Society of Illustrators YouTube channel so you can always come back and re look at the video and maybe somebody that you know might really enjoy it you could tell them about it so that they could see it another time uh, thank you so much Gigi, for this um, workshop because it's really being enjoyed we're getting some lovely comments in the chat thank you Yvette um, it was really nice to hear that you are enjoying this and um, yes it is beautiful I totally agree with you um, and we it's our pleasure to bring you these workshops and particularly amazing to have Yuji here from Mexico this morning and she really is an amazing author illustrator like her books are so special and so um rightly award winning. Um, she's, she's really been noted for her, her books. You, you, if you haven't um, gone to the library to see if you can check out, if you don't already know her books, all the libraries are, are carrying her books. I actually got this one this morning. I, I have had it uh, from the library. I'm going, to, I've already ordered it actually, and I'm going to order some more of her books because I think they'll make wonderful gifts. And I also like to always collect my own uh, special picture books for, as you can see, I've got bookshelves behind me. And, and if I was meeting Eugene in person, I would have had her sign it for me because I love to do that. But uh, hopefully one day she will come to the Society of Illustrators in a future workshop. That would be fantastic. We'd love to have you in person. Um, but how, you. how special that you could join us this morning. Um, so do pop some questions in the um, chat. We'd love to hear if you've got any special questions. Um, oh, thank you, Marissa. Um, she's, yeah, everyone's enjoying listening to you speak about your, and actually the way you read her book this morning was just beautiful. Um, do you have audio copy of your book? Uh, yeah, it, it, I think it just came out uh, not long okay. ago. And yeah. yeah find it and I hope that you love it because um, a friend and, uh, of mine created the music for it and it's this oh. music that is inspired in the music of the people of the desert so oh fantastic I, yes I, I, I would totally recommend it. yeah let's all listen to that everybody that sounds perfect I actually um, feel like your your stories would make beautiful animated um, films as well because there's so much emotion. And I just feel, you know, a book is silent until you read it out loud, but yes. I can almost, I can hear the sounds in your books. There's so much there. And picture books are not so easy to write everybody because you think, oh, that wasn't a lot of words in the book. It's, it's you know, it's a picture book. So there's pictures on every page and less words, but picking those exact words, that's not as easy, is it? You, you have to really, um, you know, because no, no, we all love words, so we could write too many words. And with picture books, you're showing um, part of the story with the illustrations. So you don't need to say, um, say, for example, colors of things, because really you're seeing the colors of things. You don't need to describe a lot of the things that you can see in the images. It's really more, um, I think your words are poetic. You move the story along with such beauty and with such meaning. Um, 
Thank you. So I don't know if we have, sometimes we have librarians joining us or teachers, um, but you know, this is a one, you know, use these books if you are probably already aware, wonderful to use in the classroom as well. Um, so do, oh, hang on, we've got a question. Let's have a look. Um, thank you, Yvette. When did you come up? Oh, sorry, um, let me see. Ah, when did you come up with uh, connecting your identity, uh, your Mexican culture, incorporating that into your art? Um, sure. Well, you from, yeah. From the very beginning, um, because one of the things that happened was that um, I came to the United States as an immigrant and found myself lost. I, I didn't know why I was here. And the connection that I made to books and stories, something that happened at the public library. Mm -hmm. um, but while I was in love with the books that I was seeing, I think that what I was most in love with was the fact that the picture book allowed me to tell stories that I had with me that were particular of where I grew mm -hmm. up, how I grew up, which was different to the place where I was living at. I was in a different place and I was missing a lot of the things that gave me um, connection and also identity yes. and validation of my identity. So then when I made my books, I was putting in my life those things I, that I missed, the things that I didn't have. Um, mm. Like uh, one of my first books, I don't know if you, you're familiar with it, but it's, is one of uh, called Just a Minute, a trickster tale and canteen book. And that's a book where um, a skeleton appears one day at the door of a very old grandmother. Um, and the skeleton says, it's time for us to go now. And the grandmother says, well, yeah, I can go, but I have one thing to do, two things to do, three things, and she keeps counting up. What we discover in the story is that she's counting the things that, um, so that she's getting ready to give her own birthday party so that she can be with her grandchildren. Yes. And in that book, what I did is I put everything that I was missing, which was this connection and the way that we, uh, like in my family, we will celebrate people's uh, lives and birthdays, uh, the food, the colors, um, mm -hmm. The, even the songs and the piñatas, because those were things that I didn't have at that moment in my life. Then I, when I put it in my books, then they were part of me, of the, I was surrendered by those things again. So I've been putting those things in my books all the time because those are the things that sustain me um, and, 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 and help me tell the stories in the very own ways that I learned uh to hear stories and 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 tell them um and also to discover who i am uh i know that it, we all have different ways of creating and some of us might put hair by hair in a um in a picture um some of you might just add colors with your hands or some of you might not add any color or put words or put drawings in your very own way um and doing books or telling stories with your illustrations is a very magnificent way of learning how you would like to tell your own story. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, oh. oh, oh, I think, yeah, sorry, I thought you were sharing something new. <laughs> um, oh, and then just, there we are, it's just my nice. Yes, um, actually, do you have dreamers with you? Ah, uh, no, not here. Not there, okay. Yes, I, I, I strongly advise those of you who aren't familiar with it um, to totally get that book as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, this morning we're learning a lot about um, putting into your stories, your illustrations, things that, that mean a lot to you. So that's so personal that everyone can really do that. You can relate to this. So things that as a child, you know, that um, are memories that you really are relating to, whether it's the smell of something cooking, or yes, it might be your favorite food, or you might have had a, a favorite 
um, toy or something that you know is special to you, you can create your artwork around that and, and put uh, meaningful words to those uh, pictures. So you don't have to necessarily write a whole story yet. You can start by doing one image with some words within the image. So I think this is a really good jumping off point. I think we're getting some more questions for you. I can see more questions. Yeah. Oh, where did you study art? Are you a self-learner or did you go to any art school? That's a good question, Yvette. I that think is a good question. No, I, I studied art at the, um, at the kitchen table. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love the picture books that I saw at the library. I brought them to my house once I had, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we had someone selling something. Live from Mexico. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I, I I brought the books that I love once I had a library card and put them on my table and try to copy them. That's how I study art. I am still studying art. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the things, even the things that I show you right now, well, there are things that I'm still figuring out how to do. And that's why I like uh, recognizing that even if we don't have training or if we cannot imagine how it's going to look like, sometimes we don't need to imagine how it's going to look like. We can always just come and sit at our table, grab some material that we might have around and see what happens. What happens, yes, see the magic happen. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to know. You yeah. don't have to know how it's going to look like. You don't have to have a plan. Just sit there and start moving your hand and see what happens. If you mm -hmm. uh, let your, your hand move, you keep breathing, your heart continues uh, thumping and, and just being alive is what uh, helps us figure it out what happens if we um, just move our hands and see mm -hmm. what we can create. Yes, it's so, uh, that, that's so beautiful. You've done um, the whole page. I, I was still coloring it in. I am sort of looking at what you're doing, but I'm having a nice time coloring in with my pencils. Yeah, it might take me longer than usually, but I'm having a lovely time doing it as well. Um, so I think we might have guests who are in your uh, city because I have a question. Let me see where that was. It was about, oh, from Kristen. She's asking, um, which local library do you access and which is your favorite bookstore? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Back when I was uh, sure, uh, uh, when I was living in San Francisco, which is where I spent uh, ten years of my life, and that's where I discovered most of the uh, libraries. Then I live in the mm -hmm. Bay Area, um, so yeah. I was a total of twenty years. My favorite. Uh, um, I, it's not necessarily my favorite, but the one that I'm most connected to was the Western Edition Library because that's the, the library that was only four blocks from my house. And I will go there when my son, before my son uh, got to go to school, we will be there every day, every afternoon uh, until they closed. Um, and we continue going there later when he was at school, but we also explore other libraries. Uh, one of my very, very, uh, love it. I love that library as well. It's a mission library in San Francisco because that's a place where I found a lot of books in Spanish yeah. or with yes. by or to for people like my son and me with mm -hmm. the stories that were familiar to me. And then of course the main library at Larkin Street, um, which is the mm -hmm. main library in San Francisco was always an absolutely um, palace to me because just having all those many books around uh, I, I could yeah. not believe it and then the store that I used to go to was the Laurel Hill um, uh, bookstore that was at the Laurel um, uh, little plaza that is right mm -hmm. on top of the hill <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that that was a store that I visited so much so much and that uh, uh, where I found books that I adore. So that's, mm -hmm. well, that's great. 
actually you're taking me back because you know what my the first city that I lived in was also San Francisco and you know I obviously speak English although I'm British I'm not American but I was really loving all the culture in San Francisco there's a, a you know real culture all around the city from different backgrounds you have Chinatown Japantown yes the the mission district for and obviously i've eaten some of the best um mexican food in america <laughs> over in because it's closer california has uh, a lot of great restaurants there although i've been to mexico and i have to say the food in mexico is extraordinary it's it's actually quite different so i i really loved going there and um tasting the, the all the different ways you create um the tortillas it's different different tasting yeah. actually right <laughs> so, yeah. so freshly made and everything um so yes Kristen says san francisco the main library is gorgeous on laurel and the laurel hill bookstore so yes thank you for sharing that she, she agreed <laughs> you're <laughs> welcome and i was seeing that yvette Pais was asking that how old was i when i moved to the united states mm -hmm. i was 24 five years old, if I'm correct. Um, and I had with me my my son, who was two months old when we moved. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, you had to yeah probably do little outings by going to parks and being outside. I remember often pushing my children outside in parks and taking them to uh, the, the little zoos or, you know, things that are children's level. I like the smaller zoos. There was one in, well, there is still one. There's one in uh, Central Park that we really enjoyed visiting. Um, I see that, I, yes, I know one of my, my students is saying, Katie, thanks for the comment. I know it's not always easy getting around in Manhattan or in the boroughs. Uh, it's quite, quite big um, avenues and blocks to walk. Uh, she said it's not always easy to get around um, the city to get to the library. Um, so sometimes the ones that smaller are near you, but the bigger ones are further away. I think, you know, the, where I am right now, because I'm down in Charleston, we have a smaller library, but they will gather books from other libraries. They have relationships with other libraries, so they can That's get right. you books. They can get you books. I, I order books. I tell them, oh, I, I need this book because I do so many things with books um, and they, they'll find those for me. But as I said, I had no trouble getting Yuji's books because the libraries and schools love her books. I mean, they're really uh, meaningful. You want to ask questions after you've read your books. So they are great jumping off points for teachers. In fact, I think somebody in the comments said, great books for um, jumping off uh, for questionings, sorry, questionings, for questions for fifth and sixth graders. I think I read that a little bit ago. But yes, I think um, any ages actually, it just depends on the kinds of questions that you can bring up with books. So picture books, you can start even with preschoolers looking at the animals and the nature and talking a little bit about the emotions. But as you get older, you can start talking about the borderlands and the other meaning behind the book, you know, and, and what it is to be a human compared to an animal. You know, it's um, Lots of things that we can think about with this book in particular, Bright Star. How many languages has Bright Star been um, translated to? Uh, right now we have it in English and in Spanish, and I know there are others, but I don't remember. Um, the one that I've seen a lot of translations for is Dreamers and also oh, Viva yes. Frida. Mm -hmm. Viva Frida is in Mandarin and in Korean and uh, um, I don't remember French. Uh, yeah, there are um, in many different languages some mm -hmm. that I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes, I think, yes. I mean, you are a Caldecott Award winner, so that book does need to go out all across the world and in different languages, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so actually, I've got some other interesting questions. Ah, so Kristen is asking, could you talk a little bit about the video with the baby listening to this book on Instagram? She says it's so magical. Yes. The video with the baby. I'm trying to remember which of them. Is that one that I that I recorded? And it might be. Do you want to tell us, Kristen? No. What I think is one that a mother recorded and then 
they tag me in Instagram and then I repost them. Mm -hmm. um, and ah. there are some that are absolutely lovely and incredible. There are some where, because I know that I have posted several, so I'm, I'm trying to figure yeah. out which one, but I remember there is one where the child, like they, they ask him, what is this, what is this? And he says something like dreamers or, you know, like they, even though they know very little words, words. They, yeah. they are <laughs> reading the book. Yeah, repeating these good words, these strong, powerful yeah. words. Yeah. yeah it's actually she said it is the one with the with the mother recorded the baby sitting and the mother was reading and the little yes uh, I, I, very I, I, <laughs> I love to see how children make their connections to the books but i also yeah. love to see how parents create those connections with their own children mm -hmm. through the books so yeah. it, is, it is it is a triangle it's not only child book it is right. child adult book yes um, and that's that's when i get um very moved because uh, parents mothers they are constantly finding ways for their children to be connected to those books but also to have the connection with the children through the books uh, yeah. like if, if they are reading together it's not only that the child is learning how to read or what the story is about they are mm -hmm. connecting what love feels like yes sitting on the, the knee exactly yes being being held and read, read to oh yeah definitely that is so true and i think um you know what what you go to sleep with in your mind or, or a voice is so soothing and you know sometimes it's not easy to get a child that's quite active to settle down and go to sleep so reading aloud um you know books is so oh, sorry no, someone's calling me <laughs> sorry no, sorry about that that's never happened sorry gosh my phone is completely turned off but i guess it's on my computer that's, That's what happens sometimes. I know. I know. It's okay. Yeah. We are yeah. among friends, and we we're are live, everybody. It's live. We've got birds singing, and we've got horns honking. We've got phones ringing. Exactly. <laughs> my, dog, my dog is very quiet. Do you have any pets around you? Did you said you had a cat, maybe wandering around? I have the cat who was here jumping on the shelves just before we started. I was a little preoccupied that she might be hunting here in front of live audience oh yes um, catching something <laughs> yeah. exactly and then um here because i this is my studio here in a place called la mancha but then i have a studio in jalapa which is the place where i was born and mm -hmm. in jalapa my companions are two dogs mm -hmm. um, and they are great and loving um and i I adore their um, their company when I'm creating, but they are not here right now because here there are cats and birds and iguanas and um, uh, yes. crabs and a lot of other animals. And you might even hear um, there are ducks outside and huh. roosters and chickens. And um, it's a very oh. live place. I wonder what your next book might be about then. Are you being, <laughs> I know you're working on some other things, but maybe there's going to be a, a new inspiration from your look. Do you actually often work in this location or is it new for you? Yes. Oh, you yes. often? Yeah, yeah. I, I spend here uh, most of the week. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah. And right now I'm working on. I'm exploring. I, I, it's hard to say like, oh, my book is about this. I'm exploring. Yes. Um, and I'm exploring what it's like to be happy. Yes, yes. I think we all do a little exploring of what it feels like to be happy. And doing illustrations and using coloring materials, it does make one feel happy. I have to say there's been an, a lot more coloring books come out into the market over the last decade. Um, to give people some 
you know, focus and peaceful time. It's almost meditational, right? To meditative to color. Um, and they've come up with more and more coloring books with nice um, nat nature themes as well, I've noticed. Um, yeah, that might be something you could also add to your repertoire is um, uh, coloring books with your illustrations from all your books. That could be nice. Well, I know you're busy, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really enjoying watching you coloring in. It's oh, very inspiring. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Well, <laughs> children and readers can always also create their own coloring pages. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes, absolutely. So true. So true. Yes. Exactly. You do. What you do is then you make your drawing. You might want to put some ink or, or just um, mark it with a pen um so that it's like a stronger uh more contrasting uh, drawing and mm -hmm. then you can always uh xerox it and and make copies of it so then you can share them you can try different ways of coloring those um yeah. those drawings. you might uh allow other people to use your drawings so that we can practice how to add layers and layers of colors right now i decided to start um adding colors like blue and green and see what happens again um and i think that what i love about this claire is that um it's something that we are doing as we have conversations yeah exactly <laughs> yes it, it, it's true you can color and talk and yeah just let it be not get to um yeah it's sort of like free flowing and that's what's so magical about it, because you you start to see things evolving. And the fact that you're using a bit of blue, I haven't even used a bit of blue yet. So maybe I'm going to add some now that's inspiring me. Oh, so yeah. kids, how are you doing with your um, coloring, everybody? I, I really am excited to see what you've come up with. And of course, if you send it in as um, you, you know, you're often requested to with after Saturday stories. We will share this with Yuji. So anything that you send in, I will send on to her because she'll love to see what you did and what how it's inspired you. Um, oh, so actually, um, Yvette, a little moment ago, said, well, it might be tricky to give you, you um, all uh, an overview of where Yuji's sitting because she's very set up with her, um, her phone and her her screen, you know, her computer screen. But she was saying, oh, it'd be nice to see more of your studio. Is it in a palapa? Yes, it is in a palapa. Let me see if I can show you maybe with this one. Let's see. Ah, yes, there we go. Look, we can see there's a lovely garden area with a park. This is, this is my palapa studio. So this is uh, where so nice. Here you are. <laughs> My computer, there are so oh, much. It's so fun to see. Yes. Fantastic. And so this is the inside, and then the rest is also my studio. Um, there is some a hammock here. where you can relax. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very nice, beautiful, tropical. Then, and some other places that are there. Mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm going to get up. Yeah, so beautiful. Oh, so actually, it was, ah, I have a question. And obviously, this is not an original question. Lots of um, people ask this question to author illustrators. So when you're writing and illustrating, would you say that both sort of come along at the same time in your notebook? Like you might have some ideas that you're writing down words and ideas, but then you'll have a little sketch, a little thumbnail, because we saw you shared some of your ideas and your notebooks uh, in the earlier presentation. Or would you say because um, you did take some writing classes that you prefer to sort of sit and, and work with the words first as an author would and write your story outlines first and then start to develop the characters? Or, or do they go hand in hand? <laughs> I've done everything. I've done that. <laughs> I've done like I, I write it first and then I figured it out how to do the illustrations, yeah. especially like if the illustrations might need a little more um, thinking. Like I, um, I made a book a while ago called uh, Little Night mm -hmm. and I wrote that story completely first because mm -hmm. I knew that if I was gonna start thinking about how I was gonna illustrate a little child that was gonna be the night, then I might, I, I might um, 
get a little stuck thinking mm -hmm. of, oh, maybe then I'm, it's going to be difficult. And that, uh, that stops my storytelling. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to think of the illustrations at all until um, I was, uh, I, the story was finished yeah so that I would not edit myself before that I decided to do it like that but mm -hmm. a lot of other books are in like that a lot of other books when mm -hmm. I decide about what about the illustrations that might change the text mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a lot of the storytelling happens through the illustrations and then the text um, changes or disappears whatever it needs to be done so yeah. yeah whatever it takes to tell the story yes yes i mean sometimes a particular perhaps you've done um some artwork that's just for your own personal you know experimentation enjoyment and there might be a little character that appears that speaks to you and that character might end up in the story so yeah um i think you're right i think it can come from look if you're an illustrator and a an author, it can come from different directions and may just depend on the book or the story that you're working on. Oh, yes, I've noticed this too. <laughs> so Yvette said she loves your ring. And I think it's the ring I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very fascinated by. So you have this Mexican ring on your um, middle finger. It's so, it's beaded. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank Thank you. you. Yeah, gorgeous. It was made by a friend of mine. So. Oh almost everything that I like, <laughs> like, like. Yes, yes, the beaded bracelets. You bracelets. see, this is also so they much have, beautiful art in yeah, Mexico. Yeah, they are made by artisans, and most of them are friends of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I love having their artwork with me. <laughs> yes, yes, I do too. I like to surround myself with artwork from other, you know, it's ceramics. I love ceramics too. New Mexico, beautiful ceramics. There's so much art and um, very rich um, history and culture in Mexico. Um, I remember I, I worked for a, an art gallery in Manhattan when I was younger, and they had a lot of animal art, and there was some amazing animal art from Oaxaca. Gorgeous. Oh, so, yeah, just like all, you know, very inspiring. Um, so, Mercedes, hi. Uh, she says she loves your... I have to see if I can pronounce it. Amacas, which you might yeah. have to <laughs> My Amacas, yeah, I love them too. And <laughs> they're dangerous. If you lie down in a hammock, uh, um, you might uh, not be again. Yes, yes. It's a good way to get to, well, you, you know, when we have infants trying to get them to sleep, we rock them. That's what a hammock feels like. It's like just being rocked. It's very soothing and relaxing to be in a hammock. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a maca is a hammock, correct? Yeah, a maca, exactly. So yeah, mm -hmm. my mother tells me that when I was a baby, uh, my crib was a hammock. I had oh. My crib, yeah. Yes, I think I've seen um, some of those. Um, certainly we had rockers, you know, little rocking cradles. But a hammock is a bit more soft, you know, it's sort of just swaying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I think I'm um, just checking that we don't have any new questions I've missed because there's been quite a lot of writing happening in our chat. Yeah. And just to give you all um, a heads up, we only have about five more minutes and then we're going to have to sadly say goodbye and thank you to you. You spent this past 90 minutes really um working on this look how much she's done well she didn't do it for the whole 90 minutes after the presentation it's been you know a, a good part of the workshop she's been coloring in this um this deer in, in the in the cactus and uh, cacti and it's gotten richer and richer and more and more detailed so you could probably just keep lay. I mean, this is something that you do. You layer your art because yes. you might find some objects or other things that you could glue on to collage it as well. Although I, I now understand more that you photograph things and then you assemble them digitally rather than you create so much um, a piece of art uh, as a collage. Is that right? Or do you do both? Uh, for me, layering is always the way to go. And um, yes. Like sometimes 
you know how we feel a little intimidated by art mm -hmm. so one of the ways that i learned to kind of open up is to be to do the layers and mm -hmm. so then yeah. Um, I go little by little and I try one thing and if it doesn't work I stop and I switch yeah. um, and and just keep adding more mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's like that like little by little and see how I feel about those yeah exactly so, yes there's a lot you can be doing um, for our older participants you know we've got students who are you know probably you know, maybe in the range of nine, ten, already experimenting with Procreate and working on the um, the iPads um, and using the the stylus. So the layers they're familiar with. Um, one of my students, or two of my students, actually, I noticed there are two here who definitely work on Procreate that um, or on digital, and that's Toma and Katie. So you can see, you know, that you could also be layering with different textures and different well you already do that so um yeah but, but yeah there's a lot you can do with um digital but also for those of you who like to do things with paper and materials um that's something i also enjoy very much is you could just with scissors and um glue just cut things out and you know just start to paste them on to create your collages and create texture and layers um you know one of the interesting things about popping the deer behind the cacti was to do it in layers you could really position and the little girl on the on the back of the cover you can position them really like they're behind whereas um you could also do that with a collage effect you know cutting out you can draw it and cut out the cactus and then you can paste it on top of an, another drawing that might have your character and have them peering out from behind so there's lots of ways to do illustrations and that's what i really enjoy about saturday stories is meeting different illustrators with unique styles and that inspires us all we all get to enjoy a new way of looking at art and how it's created and there's a lot that goes into picture books as you can see um, you might just you know be reading the book and just see the picture and think beautiful picture but now you can see how much work usually puts into her illustrations um, obviously even more time is put into them than even this morning because she's got to come up with the ideas <laughs> and uh, it doesn't it's not an overnight thing to create a picture book it, it takes months <laughs> and so um it really is an, a magical thing to get to see behind uh, the scenes of how you know picture books are created so well thank you so much everybody for joining us this morning um as i said we are going to upload a recording on our youtube channel so you'll be able to revisit and share this wonderful workshop with those that you know might enjoy it as well that missed it this morning. Um, particularly good for those who are on different time zones. You might it might be the middle of the night for them right now. They can they can access this. So we're very happy to bring this. The Society of Illustrators created this especially to share with all people who love picture books and illustration. Um, so thank you so much, and I, I hope you're going to have. A wonderful rest of your weekend, Yuji, as with all our participants. Yeah. Your weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah, already has started wonderfully. Yes, it has indeed. I agree. I agree unanimously with everybody in the audience. It's been a wonderful beginning to this weekend. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Yuji. It's been a real pleasure. I hope we see you in the Society of Illustrators in the future. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Take care and thanks again, everybody.